very good afternoon to all of you the one is uh, smart city mission yesterday you must have uh, had this uh, brief about this uh, mission which is uh, actively being implemented by the ministry of urban development as well as state governments and urban local bodies the mission is being implemented in 100 smart cities the next most important mission is amrut that is Athal mission for rejuvenation and urban transformation. I think the name of the mission itself will show you that it is an urban transformation. So I no need to much talk about the urban related issues which the cities are facing. It is infrastructure upgradation of around 500 cities. Then you are all well aware of Swachh Bharat Abhiyan where uh, towards a cleaner India where most of the cities have been taking up this program uh, for implementation. Hridai, it is a holistic development of heritage cities. These are the most uh, important flagship programs of the Ministry of Urban Development. I will dwell upon Amrut Mission for a brief to know the viewers what is the Amrut Mission and where the geospatial database creation is part of that and how we can we are going to implement it. The mission. The mission says that ensure every household in urban areas of these 500 cities should have access to tap drinking water supply and sewerage connection. See, this is the basic services of the urban areas where most of the cities, most of the areas doesn't have the water supply and sewerage. There is a lot of gap. So the mission says that it should have a 100% coverage and assured supply of water. You can understand assured supply of water. So, and there should be a sewerage connection. The other thrust area of the mission is open spaces and development and management of the granary and parks. See, this is one of, we need lung spaces where the most of the towns and cities are being congested and polluted. The open spaces and granary of developing of in the cities will make the people and get quality of life. The third thrust area is switching to public transport by NMT and reducing the pollution. These are the major thrust areas of Amrut Mission. The major components covered under the mission are water supply, sewerage and septage management, storm water drainage, urban transport, development of green spaces, reform implementation and capacity building. If you look at the coverage, these 500 cities are above 1 lakh population. Most of the, all the cities above 1 lakh are covered under Amrut and the cities which are less than 1 lakh but capital, capitals of the states, they are also covered and Hrudai cities which are heritage cities and other cities which are very close to main rivers and which are other, the rest of the cities from hill states and islands. These are the cities of 500 which are covered under the Amrut mission. You look at the fund allocation. What is the magnitude of the fund allocated for this mission? It is 50,000 crore for 5 years from 2015 to 2020 as a centrally sponsored scheme. This is the central fund allocated of 50,000 crores. This is dispersed in three installments that is 20, 40 and 40 for the components mentioned earlier. How the cities which are in various types like class 1, class 2, how they will get it? See, the cities, one third of the project cost as a grant from Government of India will be available for the cities above 10 lakhs. 
and 50% of the project cost as a grant from the cities which are less than 10 lakhs. The balance have to be fund from state governments and UNBs. For northeastern cities, it is uh, above 50%, that is up to 90% of the Government of India funds for Amrut scheme. So when we go to the implementation of the scheme, the first step is a service level improvement plan has to be prepared for each Amrut city covering uniform water supply, sewerage, the same basic services and also estimate the gaps and see the alternatives, what are the alternatives and prioritize them and financing and prepare a service level improvement plan. For each city, the onus lies with the municipal commissioner for preparation of the service level improvement plan, which is the basic document, which gives you all the requirements of that particular city with, related to our components. Then the integration of all service level improvement plans will become state annual action plan. Uh, like earlier programs, it is not project based. It is an annual plan which all projects, which all slips have been aggregated, which forms the state annual action plan, which is prepared for year wise with for all water supply, sewerage and which will give you the priorities and financing of the project. This SAP will be approved by Ministry of Urban Development through its Apex Committee. So once this is approved by the Apex Committee, the execution starts. There is a SHPSC, that is State High Power Steering Committee, which approves the uh, SAP and also approves the slips. Once that is done, the aggregated slips will become SAP, which will be approved by Apex Committee. The Apex Committee at the Ministry of EUD will approve it. Then execution begins. Then we'll go ULBs and DPRs will identify. ULBs will get the DPRs and identify the projects and implement the program. If we look at the program management structure at the national level, there is Apex Committee, which is chaired by Secretary, Ministry of Urban Development, Government of India. There are other members of the committee like Secretary, Department of Expenditure, Secretary, Economic Affairs, and Secretary, HUPA, and the Chief Planner, TCPU, and Mission Director, Member Secretary, Joint Secretary, is the Member Secretary of the Apex Committee. This Apex Committee at the national level approves the SAPs of each state and allocate the funds and also monitors and the implement, supervises the mission. If we look at the state level, there is a State High Power Steering Committee that is SHPSC, which is the most important committee at the state level, headed by the Chief Secretary. And the committee consisting of Principal Secretary, Public Health, Finance, Housing, and so on, and representative from Ministry of Urban Development, and Principal Secretary, EUD as the member secretary. The SHPC plays very important role in the Amrut mission. The major functions are, it once it integrates the slips, it identifies the the fund requirement, it identifies the priorities, it identifies the gaps of infrastructure among the ULBs and also uh, uh, approves the SAP, which prepares the SAP and it also um, uh, sanctioned the SLTC, the projects which are approved by the state level technical committee. It also brings a lot of inter-organizational coordination and collaboration for better planning and implementation of the mission. And there is another committee at the state level, that is state level technical committee, uh, newsletter, digital India initiative and so on. There are so many uh, major uh, 
um, major reforms under Amrut Mission. The fourth one, you see that urban planning and city level planning. One of the most important reform is preparation of master plan using GIS. You are all aware of master plans and development plans, which are very important for the planned development of the city. This is one of the reform where you have so many um, aspects under the reforms, which you can see devolution of funds and the building bylaws, which is the Ministry of Urban Development has taken up, uh, revision of building bylaws. And there are many reforms which are very essential for proper development of uh, the cities. Now, if you look at the Amrut mission, the most important reform is uh, formulation of GIS based master plans. It, Government of India later has made as a sub scheme fully for implement for uh, implementation in 500 cities. If you look at the background of uh, the GIS based master plans. Ministry of, of Urban Development in the past, in the eight five year plan, uh, we have, we had a ambitious program of urban mapping for 52 towns and cities, which was completed at one is to 2500 scale using aerial photographs and provided to the towns and cities for their own planning requirement. Later came the National Urban Information System scheme uh, which is uh, nearing completion, which was started uh, in uh, March 2006 for uh, development of geospatial database at 1 is to 10,000 scale using remote sensing data, 1 is to 2,000 scale using aerial, aerial data, 1 is to 1,000 scale for utility mapping. So this, under this scheme, there is a capacity building component where more than 3,000 people have been trained in application of geospatial technology for urban and regional planning. If you look at the master plan, in the whole of the country, around 20% of the towns and cities have the master plan. Why, what are the problems of, in preparation of master plan? See, if you look at the problems, we, like you have to acquire the, you have to prepare the uh, land use maps, which is very cumbersome process. And if you use the state of art of technology, you can prepare the plans much faster way. And if you look at the development plan or master plan, which is basically a, uh, which is basically a statutory document, uh, which provides, uh, which guides and regulates the urban development of the towns and cities. If you use the GIS technology, coupled with uh, remote sensing aerial technology or LIDAR, you can prepare the plans much faster and you can get a required accuracy. And this uh, digital format of the data can facilitate or uh, share the data among the line departments for their own sectoral plans. The major objective of formulation of GIS based master plan under Amruti is preparation of are developing of geo-referenced based maps and land use maps using the geographical information system for 500 cities. The other one, the, there are three major components. One is base map preparation. Number two is formulation of master plan. Number three is capacity building. If you look at the benefits, outcomes of the sub-scheme is you can prepare the master plans much fastest way and you can have an effective land use management and land use utilization and land use control also. Then you can monitor the physical growth of the cities and towns if you see that archives data how which direction the cities are growing and it enables the project planning. Suppose you want to prepare a DPR if you have a GIS database available for uh, a transport network or your water supply network or your land use management, you can effectively prepare DPRs and also for better urban management. If you look at the roles and responsibility of the uh, implementation of the project, see the first role is the map preparation using the satellite data. It will be done by NRSC National Remote Sensing Center, Department of Space. Then number two is the prioritization 
Demarcation and demarcation of area of mapping, wetting of the maps. Once the maps are prepared by NRSC, these maps will be wetted by the state governments and state mission directors. Then, for using that data, formulation of GIS based master plans and our man plans, it is state mission directors and urban local bodies. Then, the other component is capacity building. So, the ULB level and institutional level, a comprehensive capacity building program has to be developed by the states so that uh, the skilled manpower is available. Then overall coordination and monitoring is with Ministry of UDTCP. Let us see the process of formulation of GIS based master plan. First, what has to be done once you have Amrit city, first demarcate the mapping area. Which are the areas to be mapped? So that has to be done on any geocoded map like Survey of India map. So Survey of India Graticule map, you can demarcate the mapping area. While demar demarcating the mapping area, you have to see the proposed areas, future urbanizable areas and appropriately map it. Then acquire the satellite data for the area which you have demarcated. Then GPS survey has to be conducted. Then refer geo reference the map. Using the GIS, topology building, you have to do the ground truthing and provide the value addition. After ground truthing, do the value addition from various line departments, like uh, addition of uh, ward boundary maps or revenue maps or some other data which you have it, you can add to the data. Then you do the quality checking, wetting. This is wetting is the most important aspect in this whole process. Once the data comes from the National Remote Sensing Center, the local bodies have to vet the data and they have to certify it so that that data can be um, effectively used for plan formulation. Once GIS base map is ready, which this base map can be prepared using design and standards. Already design and standards, how to prepare a GIS base map has already been developed by Ministry of Urban Development. Then that data you can use for various thematic map generations required for planning purposes. Then you go for a planning process that is identification of issues. What are the issues of that city, particular city and what are the potentialities and project the requirements based on the population projections and also see the various alternatives and go for a policy proposals and you prepare a sector wise um, draft proposals and go for a master plan formulation draft then put up for the government approval as per the state town and country planning act. How we have worked out the cost? See there are metro cities in Amrut and you have class 1 and other than class 1. So what we have based on the certain uh, criteria we collected from the state governments we uh, got any kind of uh, assumption that metro city is around 500 square kilometers and class 1 and other cities are 200 square kilometers. We have got a data cost from the NRSC cost committee that is around 10,000 rupees per square kilometer from data acquisition end to end and delivery of the final maps at 1 is to 4,000 scale. Why 1 is to 4,000 scale? We had a chief planners meeting, chief town planners meeting. And the chief town planners of the states have decided that if it is 1 is to 4000 scale maps are provided for master plan formulation, it will meet all the requirements that is superimposition of revenue maps and other maps which are statutory maps so that they can prepare master plans very effectively. So then we have worked out per square kilometer cost as per NRSC estimate rates, we have worked out the cost of mapping would be around 115 crores for all these 500 cities. Then plan formulation. As per the rights obtained prevailing rates from state town planning departments of the country, we have normalized the rates and a metro city can be, a master plan for metro city can be prepared with 100 lakhs and whereas other towns which will be 75 lakhs per town uh, will be the cost for plan formulation. So that uh, for the cost of plan formulation works out to be 388 crores. 
this is an estimate so the then we have worked out cost of capacity building program for each city of metro uh, per unit cost is around 5 lakhs for each metro city and each other city it is a 2 lakhs so we have worked out for 500 cities the capacity building program which has to be uh, um, implemented by state um, mission directors uh, which will be around uh, 10.85 crores the total budget outlay the sub scheme is funded 100% centrally by government of india so which will cost around 515 crores where uh, uh, generation of base map and thematic map and at 1 is to 4000 scale is 115 crores and master plan formulation is uh, 388 crores and capacity building capacity building there are three levels one is administrative level the administrator will be trained for 3 or 4 days it is basically an awareness program and there is a planning stream level where it is for 2 weeks and operators and technician level there will be it will be a program of 1 month so that different levels of people will be trained under the comprehensive capacity building program which a network of institutions have to be identified the states and towns so that both the institutions as well as the manpower will get trained in uh, this application of space technology for formulation of master plan the fund flow how once you have towns have been identified demarcated the areas then you have to prepare a state uh, uh, action plan where the funds will be released 20% of the project cost for all the three components on approval of the state action plan then you have a next followed by 40% of the project cost for base map and the map thematic map creation and the waiting of the data analysis report then another 20% on submission of draft master plan and final 20% installment on approval of the final master plan so this is a 20 40 20 and 20 unlike the major uh, main amrut mission you have 20 40 40 at funds at every stage will be released subject to furnishing of utilization certificate and physical progress of deliverables the timelines see the timelines uh, what have been identified is that for uh, a batch of 100 uh, towns or cities it is 6 months uh, the major activities are data acquisition to generation of thematic layers then uh, for plan formulation taking the input of our um, uh, base map prepared on gis mode uh, that will be used meantime all state town planning departments have to collect the socio economic data and also simultaneously they have to wet the maps Uh, provided by the remote sensing centers and they have to go for primary and secondary surveys which are mandatory or required for pl plan formulation and are analyze the data and project the requirements for these activities uh, 36 months is the approximate time uh, which was uh, um, anticipated in the scheme deliverables at the end of the implementation of uh, this sub scheme what all we get we get 1 is to 4000 scale defined um, layers at the functional scale of thematic maps so 1 is to 4000 scale uh, thematic maps and base map as per the design and standards we have almost uh, we have finalized the design standards and the draft copy of the design standards were sent to all the states uh, for their own comments then we have also received the comments there is a committee design standards committee at the national level constituted by the ministry of urban development who has working working out the details of how to acquire the data and what are the standards of uh, data standards and image standards and output standards and so on they have been worked out the other one is urban database creation to know the health of the city you should have the socio economic data see just having the physical data is not sufficient for plan formulation you should have a socio economic data sector wise like housing houseless houseless formulation and physical data and what are the resources are available uh, in the city and its region and its vicinity and what are the transport related aspects what is the model split what is the traffic uh, traffic volume 
and so on uh, things have to be collected like water supply what is the ward wise uh, water is available how many hours and what is the uh, gap today and that all to estimate that what you need is sector wise water supply drainage sewerage and solid waste disposal there is a format has been uh, designed and kept it in the design standards so that every town uh, while collecting while formulating the master plan they have to collect the socio economic data from line departments like public works department or jal board and uh, revenue departments and education department so all the sectors which are covered in the uh, city or in the master plan has to be uh, collected from the um, line departments once it is collected then you have to store it in the computer or link with your gis database so that various thematic maps such as um the population density map suppose if you connect with a ward boundary map and a, uh, your gis based map and connect with uh, population density then you will find it out which are the wards having um the what kind of densities then once you collect the socio economic data and analyze it then you will find it out the gaps then you have to various thematic maps available from the gis database and which a base map also available so that you can go for various planning a various your land use maps and the thematic maps such as uh, you know water resources map or you can find it out network map road network map rail network map and so on so that you can uh, put your plan proposals on gis database which is available for um, plan implementation while preparing a master plan every state has to look into their own state town and country planning act and accordingly plan has to be prepared so in this connection what we have done if the states who doesn't have required manpower so they can outsource the plan formulation so for that we have prepared rfp and also uploaded on our uh, mission website that is amrut.gov.in where you can download rfp in the rfp you can uh, modify the uh, as per the requirement of state town planning department and they can um, hire the services of the consultant for formulation of master plan so since the period of this uh, sub scheme is 3 uh, uh, years one has to be uh, very careful and should look into the websites so that they can get it then capacity building component under the capacity building component it is a comprehensive in nature you have to the states have to identify uh, the institutions such as a state remote sensing centers or national remote sensing center or iirs such kind of institutions for training their own manpower and funds are allocated for that and uh, from line departments and town planning department and all other concerned department you will be you have to get them trained so that they can they are capable to use gis software and the data available from um, uh, national remote sensing center can be used effectively for formulation and updation of master plans what is the review and monitoring mechanism at state level we have a state level technical committee which will oversee the progress of technical implement implementation of the reform this sltc which is the part of amrut main amrut will see which are the areas can be uh, part of the master plan and they have to get be notified and once that is done the demarcation and priorities if suppose a state is having 20 um, amrut cities which are the cities have to be taken up in the as a priority cities see these those cities which doesn't have any master plan has to be given the first priority and the cities whose master plan is expiring suppose by 2015 or 2016 have to be given more priority and the cities whose master plan is there they can be considered that will be decided by the state level technical committee or even by the town planning department then once this at state level uh, this uh, state action plan has been prepared and it has to go to the state level high powered steering committee which is chaired by Mm, the chief secretary so once that has been done uh, the the at central level uh, periodic and detailed monitoring will be and review of the reform state wise will be carried out by the tcpo and monitoring and review will be also done by technical advisory committee 
then whole of this uh, state action plan for gas based master plans will be approved by the apex committee in overall at the national level the apex committee will monitor review overall progress of the uh, sub scheme implementation what are the challenges see for formulation of master plan we need the data from line departments the sharing of the data without wasting much time within the plan period within the mission period the departments have to share the data there is a uh, lack of coordination among the departments and para statals and line departments which is one of the important part of uh, this uh, sub scheme the other thing is interest on the part of states and will be they should show more interest so that once you have a master plan land acquisition and other things will be very easy because plan formulation is a statutory uh, plan is a statutory document where you can um, use uh, the um, plan so that for your project implementation the spatial attribute data and wetting of the maps line by the line departments is a time consuming process the other thing is lack of adequate capacity and trained professionals within the ulb who are familiar with gis so there is a capacity building component and in amrut where you can use effectively you can start right across the planning stage so that network of institutions can be identified and the personnel whom can be trained in each ulb can be identified so that they can be sent for the training the other challenge is availability of cadastral maps and other thematic maps and data because the data pertains to various periods of suppose the data data of water supply uh, pertains to 2013 uh, and or 2007 and 8 and population is 2011 and so on these kind of uh, things have to be resolved so that uh, the scheme implementation can go in the right time action initiated what we have done under the scheme we had a chief town planners meeting of different states uh, and we have discussed we have resolved so many issues we have taken uh, uh, before the um, the mission implemented what are the issues to be coming up and so we have taken the inputs from the chief town planners then unit rate of mapping we have worked out with uh, very, very close uh, coordination with the national remote sensing center we have taken average area of the different uh, class and size of the towns and we have fixed up the unit rate of mapping which can be universally applicable and design and standards is the most important document which we very soon uh, we are finalizing it and very soon we will upload in the website see this document instead of everyone uh, um, decide different uh, standards suppose there is a land use map or a base map what are the contents of the base map if there is a transport map if you say what are the contents and what is the color code and what is the um, uh um uniform code for the standard for that each content has been identified then state mission directors have been requested to prioritize the cities and demarcate the mapping areas and as well as the planning areas for the um cities amro cities then uh, rfp has already been a template has been prepared for procurement of consultancy services which has been uploaded on the and also circulated to all the states so that they can start the process of if they required they want to have um, consultancy services from the open market so they can go for rfp then we are also in the process of finalizing mou between uh, ministry of urban development and nrc for creation of geospatial database so we are also proposing a meeting of state nodal officers we have requested Uh, the state governments to identify most of the states have identified the the nodal officers who will be exclusively implementing this sub scheme gis based master plan then we have also designed a template for state action plan for the sub scheme which has been finalized so i am very much uh, thankful to the participants for their uh, uh listening if you have uh, any uh, queries or uh, details you can uh, call us or contact us and you can also refer our websites uh, amrut.gov.in tcpomud.gov.in